which public surfaces contain the highest bacteria content? That's a question asked by Amelia and Marieke from the International School of Luxembourg. The project compares bacteria samples from different surfaces in public malls to see which develops the most bacteria grown on agar plates. Good luck, girls. Okay, uh, good afternoon. My name's Amelia. And I'm Marieke. And our project, for our project, we compared different public surfaces to see which contained the most bacteria. So we decided to choose this project because we wanted to conduct an experiment having to do with the current pandemic. And due to the increased cleaning in public areas, we thought it would be interesting to uh, compare different surfaces to see which had the most bacteria. So we use our knowledge from our previous project. So we know that agar and gelatin uh, contains protein and nutrients, which is optimum for bacterial growth. So we thought, um, in knowing that this is optimum for bacterial growth, how does um, public surfaces and how, well, which public surfaces contain the most bacteria? Okay, so for materials, we use 14 grams of nutrient agar to create 20 dishes of agar and 500 milliliters of water. For our equipment, we used a stirring rod, a beaker, a balance, a hot plate, a spatula, and a thermometer. Unfortunately, we didn't have an autoclave to properly sterilize our mixture, but we tried to um, sterilize our workspace, use gloves, keep everything sanitary. And we also bought things that were packaged to reduce the air contamination and also to remain safe and reduce cross-contamination between our samples. We used hand sanitizer and gloves between the samples. So here are some pictures of the materials we used. For a procedure, we started by sterilizing our entire workspace as well as any materials which we had not already bought sterilized. And then we made our nutrient agar solution and sterilized it as best we could by bringing it to boiling point. To make the agar plates, we then poured the agar solution into the peachy dishes and made sure to keep them covered as much as we could to reduce air contamination, uh, which would mess with our results. To allow them to set, we then placed them inverted in the fridge to avoid um, condensation forming on the agar plates. Um, and then we collected our bacteria samples in three different locations, which were shopping centers, and we made sure to test the same surfaces in each uh, location to receive most accurate results possible. And then we swabbed the bacteria on our agar plates and left them in a warm environment to promote bacteria growth. After seven days, we then measured the percentage of the surface area of the agar plates which the bacterial colonies had grown on. Uh, these are some pictures of the procedure, us measuring everything out and labeling the bags. So now for our results, we did find a few different results. So on the top left, there's, it's very sporadic, it's very miscellaneous, there's small colonies. And then for example, on the bottom left, there's much more um, bacterial growth and much more colonies. And we found it interesting that on the top right, there was a, a white, very different colored bacteria, almost branch-like. And we weren't able to identify the exact name or type of bacteria, um, which Amelia's gonna talk about later but we did um, identify that there were some fungus and bacteria. So before conducting our experiment, we hypothesized that the bathroom door handles and the elevator buttons would contain the most bacteria as these are frequently touched surfaces. And we also did further research to um, find out which surface areas uh, were the most unsanitary in public areas in order to choose which surfaces we would test. So for results, surprisingly, we found that the bathroom door handle actually had the least amount of bacterial growth. And we thought this could be maybe due to an, uh, increased sanita sanitation precautions in bathrooms because of COVID-19, or maybe even because of decreased human contact in bathrooms because people are becoming more cautious and wary of bacterial um, infections or spreads in bathrooms. And we found that elevator buttons and shopping carts contained uh, the most bacterial growth as an average among their three uh, tests. So we can conclude that shopping cart handles and elevator buttons are among the dirtiest surfaces in those three malls. In the future, we hope to further our experiment by being able to identify the different types of bacteria grown on the agar plates. However, we weren't able to do that this time because we didn't have supervision and we had to adhere to safety precautions in case some of the bacterial colonies were pathogenic. 
Um, but we think it would be interesting to be able to compare the different bacteria found in, for example, the bathroom or elevator to see which is more harmful to humans or which can be spread more easily. Uh, so to follow up a bit, um, also we would be more aware of air contaminants because we did have a small bacterial growth um, on our controlled uh, slide, which shouldn't be happening because um, we didn't test anything on it and it was our control slide. And we would also try to use a more sterile environment as we used it, um, a kitchen and not a proper laboratory. So maybe to decrease the amount of, um, you know, to increase uh, more accurate um, findings, we would use a more sterile environment. So yeah, thank you for having us. Uh, that was our presentation. Thank you.